For us orthopedic surgeons, it is more and more frequent to assess in our patient the presence of an anterior cruciate ligament disrupture. That's true above all in those athletes practicing impact and pivoting sports activities such as football or volleyball and basket. And this usually happens due to the peculiar traumatic rotational momentum applied to the joint during the injury in this kind of sports activities. And it's just about ACL injuries that we'll talk about in this video. Good morning everyone, I'm Stefano Teramo and this is OrthoStrike. Anterior crusade ligament is a really important articular structure for the knee. It's placed at the center of the knee, central pivot, and it's constituted by two anatomic bundles, the anteromedial and posterior lateral bundles that work all together in synergy by delivering to the ACL the crucial capability to stabilize the knee. And this stabilizing action is made by the ACL, as we can observe in this model, and the ACL is placed in the central pivot. It originates at the region of the tibial spines in the central tibial plateau and extends proximally and in obliquous direction through the posterior lateral in the condylar notch inserting and attaching to the footprint on the femur. And these crucial structure that is the ACL gives a very important stability action to the knee in relationship with anterior displacement of the tibia and with another important component of stability of the joint that is the rotational stability. The ACL is fundamental to let the joint be stable from a rotational point of view. Indeed, when an ACL is torn, the knee joint gets more unstable from an anterior and rotational point of view, and it makes easier and easier to have loosening and instability events during sport practice, above all when the patient is practicing sports that require frequent direction changes. And these, in these kind of sports, such as football, for example, or basket, in which we have the higher risk to have this kind of injury, because the rotational momentum applied to the knee joint when the foot is stiffed on the ground, and there is a forcing a rotational movement on the joint, this is the typical situation in which the stress tolerance from a mechanic point of view of our ACL collagen fibers may be overcame. In these cases, it is easier to get a torn ACL. And when an ACL is torn, this consequent instability of knee joint is accessible by many clinical tests. One of them, one most frequently used, is the anterior drawer test. This is a test that's performed at 90 degrees of flexion, in which we try to apply a push anterior wards to the tibia in order to displace it relationship with the femur and to appreciate the laxity of the tibia due to the insufficient stability of ACL. Another option, as we'll see in another future opportunity in Strikes video, is the assessment of PCL, posterior crochet ligament, by applying a posterior directed force and trying to displace the tibia on the posterior aspect of the knee. But we'll see it talking about PCL tests in another occasion. Then a second important test to assess anterior instability due to ACL tear is the Luckman one that is performed at a reduced flexion degree, not 90 but 20, 30 degrees of flexion. In this case, we try to displace anteriorly the tibia, as we saw, and use to assess its anterior instability. A really crucial aspect we have to consider is the second component of ACL-related instability, that is the rotational component. We may try to assess this component of the instability by two tests that are the pivot chip and the jug test that apply rotational movement, a smooth and continuous rotational movement to inflection and extension of the knee in order to assess the discontinuity of the rotational movement and a tear of the ACL. Just by clinical assessment with these physical exams, 
combined with the good anamnestic recap of the patient by assessing the traumatic history of the injury is mostly probable to have a good diagnostic orientation about the hypothesis of an ACL rupture, even though nowadays it's really crucial the help that comes to us orthopedic surgeon by radio diagnostic uh, proof that is the MRI magnetic resonance imaging it is an exam that shows us the anatomic features of the knee and the core orientation and continuity of the ACL by MRI we are able to study both direct or indirect signs of ACL tear and used to achieve a quite good sensibility and sensitivity in assessing an ACL rupture. Once we reach the diagnosis of ACL tear, it's worth to consider the core treatment for any patient, if surgical or conservative. And this is the really crucial aspect of all our topic, because many times in our consultation we have patients that ask for availability of not surgical treatment, wondering about the possibility to treat or to heal an ACL rupture, not by surgery, but by any other conservative treatment. Indeed, we have to say that once again, the core treatment is not a general and standardized decision, but a specific personalized decision depending from the features of any patient. The most important criteria in this case are the age of the patient and the functional demand of the patient because of course will be different our decision considering a, a sports athlete or an elder not physically active patient. Another important aspect we go to consider is the healthy status of the cartilage of the joint because a pre osteoarthritic joint is not worth to be operated due to the poor prognostic of an ACL reconstruction in degenerative knees and pre osteoarthritic status. In this sense is indeed quite widespread in the scientific community the consensus about the strong indication for surgical treatment in ACL ruptures that occur in young and sports athletes. This is really important to consider the age in patients that don't reach the 45-50 years of age. It's worth to suggest surgical treatment above all if it's a sports patients that are used to practice impact sports activities and has a high uh, demand in order to have a functional recovery, come back to his sports activity as soon as possible. And that's justified by the fact that for its vascular anatomy and uh, blood perfusion, the ACL has not a spontaneous potential of healing if it's torn, because the blood supply at this level is not enough to allow a direct repair by the spontaneous healing of the ligamentous tissue. So in case deciding not to operate and to leave an ACL torn, above all in a young patient, the consequences that the patient has to accept are basically two in the middle-long term. The first one is the persistence of a chronic instability of the joint. This instability makes almost impossible or not functionally efficient the knee biomechanical behavior during sports activity because there will be a tendency to instability and laxity above all in change of the direction or in running with impact or strong jerk or pivoting movements and it will be really difficult to practice high-level sports in this condition in the future. The other important long-term consequences of a torn ACO is the predisposition of the joint to a nearer and faster degenerative progression of the cartilage. It is easier to get a pre osteoarthritic condition in an unstable joint than a normal joint, and use a patient will be most likely directed to a previous and precocious development of osteoarthritis in the future years. And it will also be present a higher risk of secondary lesions at other joint structures such as menisci in case of persistence instability of the joint due to an insufficient ACL. 
that's possible to make different considerations in other categories and features of patients. For example, other patients or patients that are not young anymore, we may say starting by 55 years old and up, are not fitting for a good indication of surgery because it's demonstrated that the presence of the quiet, moderate, uh, degenerative uh, pattern at the knee joint is not a good pronostic factor for the post-op evolution of ACL reconstruction. It invites us to consider the possibility of an abstention from surgical treatment because this degenerative background at knee is not a good basis on which to reconstruct an ACL and it's a negative pronostic factor. Of course, it would be necessary to correlate this aspect with the functional demand of the patient because once more it depends from the expectations of any patient from a functional and sports and physical activity point of view to decide if it's worth or not to proceed with the surgical reconstruction. Another situation in which there is room for a conservative treatment from a potential point of view is the partial tears of the ACL. It does the tears that affect only one bundle of the cruciate ligament. For example, the most frequently affected is the anteromedial bundle, isolated tear, may be treated both surgically or conservatively. It depends by the quantity of fibers involved in the rupture. If there is a minority of fibers involved by the tear, and this uh, partial tear is possible to try and to make an attempt of conservative treatment avoiding surgical intervention and in this case conservative treatment is constituted by muscle strengthening process with rehabilitation and physiotherapy accompanied by an important biomechanical stimulation in order to recover proprioception it does the subjective perception of stability from a biomechanical point of view at knee. After at least three months of work in this sense, it will be possible to assess again the situation, to check the stability of the knee and to check the evolution with conservative treatment. If it's not enough and there is not a functional satisfactory evolution from a stability point of view during activity, it will be worth to consider the possibility to revert the indication and to pass through surgery in order to finally reconstruct the ACL and to have a good functional goal postoperatively. We'll approach the great topic of surgical treatment of anterior cruciate ligament tears in our next video, in which we'll explore by an iconographic point of view, but with photos and videos of surgical techniques in order to fix and reconstruct the ACL. We'll also talk about post-op recovery and the return to play times after surgery. So I suggest you not to miss the next appointment with OrthoStrike. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye everyone. Come and home with me Belonging me to Northern Waiting for long trees I'm waiting for you There is no choice Nobody cries to long for me Sometimes I fall Fly so far